For the safety of your smile, use Pepsodent twice a day. See your dentist twice a year. Lever Brothers Company presents the Pepsodent show, My Friend Irma, created by Cy Howard and starring Marie Wilson as Irma with Joan Banks as Jane. Friendship, friendship, just a perfect friendship when other friendships have been forgotten. of man's mind for concentration is really wonderful. A doctor, for example, may be deeply concerned over his income tax, but when he steps into the operating room and puts on those rubber gloves, you can be assured his mind is on his patient. The same thing goes with a concert maestro. No matter what, when he reaches that podium, his mind is on the score. And so it goes right down the line. Everybody has their mind on something one time or another. Even Irma Peterson, the girl I live with, her mind is always on a permanent vacation. <laughs> now, don't get me wrong. I love the girl. It's just that sometimes she... Well, for instance, some of the phone conversations I overhear are really incredible. Take the other day. Irma was on the phone, and she said, Hello? Is this a general merchandise mart? Uh, my name is Irma Peterson, and I'd like to return uh, a return order number 242. Huh? Well, I read the ad in the dark, and I thought it said polo coat. I have no use for a pole cat. <laughs> see what I mean? Well, uh, maybe it's my fault. Maybe I should see that she gets out more and meets people, and maybe she'd become a little more sophisticated. Hey, that gives me an idea. Honey. Yes, Jane? Sweetie, we're off work this weekend, and the papers say the snow upstate is knee-deep. Why don't we go? Knee-deep? But, Jane, that would cover my legs, and Al says they're the nicest part of me. <laughs> Look, Irma, don't become a problem before we even start. Are you interested in going someplace or not? Well, of course I am, Jane. Uh, where would we go? Well, there's a little place near Albany called Scapahatchetan Lodge. Scapahatchetan? Gee, that's an odd name. <laughs> well, it, it, it's of Indian origin. According to an old legend, on the spot where the lodge is, an Indian chief threw his beloved over a cliff. And to this day, they say every night, her ghost dances around the fire. Oh, well, that sounds perfect. I always like a place with a floor show. <laughs> <laughs> What kind of clothes do we have to take with us, Jane? Well, it's a winter resort, so take along everything you have that's warm. Your, uh, your snuggies. <laughs> what are you laughing at? They tickle. <laughs> Irma, act your age. Uh, wear your woolen suit and take along that rabbit-lined jacket. That should keep you warm. All right, Jane, but I don't think it's real rabbit. Why not? Well, rabbits are supposed to multiply, but every time I wear it in the rain, it gets shorter. <laughs> Open up, chicken. It's me. Uh, just a minute, Al, honey. Hello, Jane. Hiya, chicken. Oh, Al, I want to tell you the news. Jane and Hold I it, are chicken. going Hold it, chicken. I ain't to... got time to listen. Just want you to wish me, wish me luck, because I got a guy waiting up the street who may back me in my newest deal, and this one will ring the bell. On what patrol wagon? <laughs> No, it's legitimate. Oh, please, Jenny, so excited. What's your idea, Al? Well, it's an invention. It's a big, empty barrel nailed to a pair of roller skates. So when a guy leaves the racetrack, he still's got something to wear and something to ride home in. <laughs> Can't stick around for any bars. We'll be right back. Goodbye. There goes America's answer to Ponzi. <laughs> well, Irma, let's start packing for our trip, huh? Oh, but... Uh... Jane, I just happened to think, what, what am I going to do without Al? I'll miss him. Look, sweetie, whatever we do, we do together. Al just doesn't happen to fit in. But I can't leave him behind here all alone. Why, Al is just like a child. Honey, you've got to stop thinking of Al as being a child just because he was once a juvenile delinquent. <laughs> Come in. It's only me, Professor Kropotsky. <laughs> 
Hello, Janie and Irma, my two little hot rods. <laughs> One rattling a head, the other with a head that rattles. <laughs> Excuse me, a little joke I picked up from a used car salesman. <laughs> now retired. Oh, Professor Jay and I are going away over the weekend. What a coincidence. Mrs. O'Reilly is taking me on a trip to Philadelphia. Well, how nice. Is there, a, is there any romantic purpose? Oh, no. I think she's taking me along for protection. Protection? Yeah, I believe they are still angry at her in Philadelphia. If I'm not mistaken, she is the one who dropped the Liberty Bell and cracked it. <laughs> Professor, you're always kidding. Everyone knows that was Paul Revere. <laughs> Skip it, Irma. Uh, Professor, does Mrs. O'Reilly have a family in Philadelphia? Yes, and it may surprise you, but I understand that Mrs. O'Reilly has got a twin sister, and that has got me worried. Why? Well, I might have a drink in Philadelphia, start seeing double, and seeing four like Mrs. O'Reilly is enough to make a man say. <laughs> Oh, Professor, you don't mean that. Of course not, Jenny. But I've never been to Philadelphia, and despite the things I've said about Mrs. O'Reilly, she's still very good company. Besides, I'll get a lot of free meals. <laughs> Tell me, where are you girls going? Oh, we're going to a place out in the country, just to get in the snow. Oh, the snow. I remember in the old country, when it snowed, we gypsies would sit around the fire and drink vodka to keep warm. And we'd drink more vodka and more vodka. And the more vodka we drink, the warmer we'd get. And pretty soon, the fire would sit around us to get warm. <laughs> Come in. Hello, girls. Oh, hello, Mrs. O'Reilly. Oh, what a pretty dress. Oh, Thank you, Janie. I bought it for the trip to Philadelphia. Do you like the full drape in the back of the skirt? <laughs> Mrs. O'Reilly, the train has a caboose. You don't have to wear one. <laughs> oh, Professor, you know you like it. Besides, don't forget you promised to be nice when you meet me relatives. I promised and I'll keep my promise. If the sign says don't feed them, I won't feed them. <laughs> Mrs. O'Reilly's relatives aren't in a cage. They're probably running around loose. <laughs> oh, well, I meant... Irma, stay out of it. And we'd better start packing or we'll never get that weekend in the snow. Oh, so you girls are going out for the winter sports. Well, take my advice and bring warm clothing. You've got to be very careful if you want to be comfortable. Oh, I spent some agonizing days in the cold. Yes, it must have been agonizing because your face was frozen in that position. <laughs> Come on, Mrs. O'Reilly. Well, girls, have a good time. Well, if that pair doesn't wake up Philadelphia, nothing will. Come on, Irma. Let's go down to the basement and get our suitcases. All right, and I'm going to throw the mothballs out of my suitcase. They're a fake. I haven't caught one moth yet. <laughs> Hello? What? Lake Placid calling? Who? Oh, put him on. Hello, Richard. Are you having a good time skiing at Lake Placid? Oh, good. What's that? Oh, I see. Bring what? Yes, they're at the office. The brown envelope. What, Richard? Business and pleasure? Well, I I'd love to. <laughs> well, you're the boss, honey. I mean, yes, Richard, I'll waste no time. Goodbye. Irma, guess what? Richard has invited me to Lake Placid. Isn't it wonderful? I Oh, I'm sorry, Irma, I forgot. But you promised we would go away together. But, honey, th this is business. Uh, Richard wants me to bring an envelope of securities. He's meeting an important client there. Believe me, it's mostly business, and I'll be up to my neck in work. Now, where did I put my strapless evening gown? <laughs> well, I don't know how you work, but I never wear that in the office. Oh, honey, <laughs> can't you understand? I, I hate to break our plans, but... You do understand, don't you? Oh, certainly. Think nothing of it. Oh, that makes me feel better. I'll go down now and get that suitcase. Now, you're sure you're not hurt, Irma? Oh, not at all. These things never bother me. Ha, 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 ha. I'll see you, Irma. <laughs> Come here. Just 
saw Jane fly by. They must be on our way to a bargain sale. Hey, chicken, what's the matter? You're crying. I've been jilted. <laughs> what? Jane and I were going away to the country for the weekend, but now she's going to Lake Placid to meet Richard. Well, can't we go with her? No, she didn't invite us. I guess she's ashamed of me. That dame is a snob. She won't recognize us as her equals. Why, that's against all the democratic principles our fighting ancestors have died for. She's got no business trying to run your life. This is a free country. Is this why Paul Revere warned us that the Redcoats was coming? Is this why we fought the Battle of Bull Run? Did George Washington cross the Delaware in vain? Was Custer's last stand for nothing? Well, of course not, Adam. When I think of them lives that was laid down in the Battle of Bunker Hill, and those brave sailors who perished when the monitor sank the Merrimack, I tell you, chicken, it's our duty to fight these injustices and, and the people like Jane who are undermining our great nation. Well, you're right, Al. You bet your life I'm right. And it's about time someone told that dame off. Yes, and I'm the one to do it. I think I hear her coming now. Uh, uh, we'll wait out in the kitchen, chicken. <laughs> Don't want to intrude in domestic affairs. Oh, just leave it up to me. I'm fed up. Me and democracy are counting on you, chicken. <laughs> One minute. Oh, I hope this bag isn't... Irma, why are you staring at me like that? You ought to know. Irma Peterson, if you've got something on your mind, get it out. If you leave it in there, it'll only give you a headache. All right. You asked for it. Traitor. Traitor? <laughs> yes, you don't know the first thing about the democratic principles we're fighting our ancestors for. What? What? <laughs> People like them were trying to free the country of. Honey, honey, wait a minute. Oh, no, Jane, don't try to stop me. You might as well know. Is this why Paul Revere waved his red coat <laughs> so the bull would run? <laughs> Is this why the monitor and the Merrimack sunk Bunker Hill? <laughs> For goodness sakes, I don't know what you're talking about. Don't try to be ignorant. It's my turn to talk. Why do you think George Washington had his custard stand in the Delaware? <laughs> For nothing? And those brave sailors that perished under the minds of our great nation... Hold it, chicken, hold it! Oh, Al, would you please tell me why Irma has given me this mixmaster version of our American history? You know what she's driving at, Jane. This is a free country. Why can't we go to Lake Placid? But if I... you're worried about the dough, forget it. Happened to get into a little card game with three gentlemen and my own cards. <laughs> Naturally, I'm loaded. Oh, Al, you didn't get it dishonestly. Oh, no, there were 52 cards. <laughs> Just the assortment was different. <laughs> but that's beside the point. What do you say, Jane? Do we go with you? Well, all right. If you want to take Irma, it's all right with me. In fact, it might even be good. I'd be so nervous carrying the envelope of securities. It, it'd be kind of comforting to have you along. Oh, Jane, you're so wonderful. I don't know how to thank you, but maybe someday we'll meet in another world and I'll take you to Lake Placid. <laughs> <laughs> don't overdo it, Irma. Now, I just want the two of you to understand one thing. Stay out of mischief, because if anything should prevent me from delivering these securities to Richard in the morning, I'm as good as fired. Ha <laughs> ha, forget it, Jane. Let's all go out and buy some skates and snowshoes and skis. Uh, chicken, can you ski? Well, not very well. Do you, Al? No, not good. Well, then why should we waste the money? Let's just buy one pair of skis and we'll split it between us. <laughs> Don't think that you are safe from film. Run the tip of your tongue over your teeth. If you feel a slippery coating, you have film, and you need Pepsodent with Irium to remove it. For film is worse than you think. Film collects stains that make your teeth look dull. But remember, Pepsodent toothpaste removes film, makes your teeth look bright. Film harbors germs that cause unpleasing breath. True, but Pepsodent removes film makes your breath fresh and clean. Film glues acid to your teeth, the very acid many dentists agree is the cause of tooth decay. That's right. But Pepsodent toothpaste removes film and the acids it contains. Film never lets up. It forms continually on your teeth. 
Yes, you have to fight film every day. So brush your teeth twice a day with Pepsodent toothpaste because no other toothpaste can duplicate Pepsodent's film-removing formula. No other toothpaste contains irium or Pepsodent's gentle polishing agent. So start now to fight film with Pepsodent, the toothpaste with an exclusive formula for removing film. now arriving on track 12 Well, from here we are at the railroad station. And so far, everything is under control. I have the securities for Richard tightly clutched in both hands. Al is taking care of the baggage and the equipment. I just spent a hundred hard-earned dollars for accessories, ice skates, and snowshoes. And Irma? Well, she's fully prepared for our trek to the snow because there she stands in full regalia a sight that would scare the tuxedo off a penguin. <laughs> She's wearing a white sweater that she knitted herself with a scarf to match. Well, it, it's not exactly a scarf. You see, it was her first attempt at knitting a sweater and she didn't know what to do with the third sleeve. <laughs> so she's wrapped it around her neck. Well, I can't stand here admiring her. There are things to be done. Let's see now. Where's the ticket window? Train now, leaving on track six for Harmon, Poughkeepsie, Albany, Oh, Buffalo, gee, Cleveland, isn't this exciting? Cleveland. Look at all the people. Yeah, chicken, in a place like this, you'll find all kinds of people going to all kinds of places. Hey, there's a friend of mine. Excuse me, chicken, I'll wave to him. Hiya, Harry. He didn't wave back, Al. Is he stuck up? No, chicken, he's handcuffed. <laughs> Kids, we, we don't have too much time. Al, will you see about the tickets? I'll get a red cap. Sure, Jane. Oh, for goodness sakes, Al, roll down your pants legs. You're not going to get on for half there. <laughs> yes, you're right. Be right back. Oh, uh, Jane, I, I think I'll get a magazine to read on the train. Well, all right, sweetie, but for heaven's sakes, don't get into any trouble. Get your magazine and come right back. I can't relax until I'm on the train with these securities. Oh, I'll be careful. Don't train worry. now, leaving on track seven for Bridgeport, New Haven. New uh, can I help you, miss? Is there some particular magazine you're looking for? Uh, yes. Do you have the January issue of True Happenings magazine? No, I'm sorry. I don't have a copy left. Oh, you see, I was following the serial in the January issue about a husband whose wife tripped over the baby, and he went to call the doctor and walked into the cement mixer. <laughs> you don't know how it all came out, do you? Uh, no, no, I don't, but I'm sure it must have been fun. Well, gosh, uh, I'll take a copy of Coronet magazine. Uh, maybe my uncle's picture is in it. He used to play one, you know. <laughs> Uh, yes, yes, here you are. Thank you, goodbye. Train now leaving on track six for Harmon, Poughkeepsie, Albany, Buffalo, Cleveland, oh, Toledo. Al, did you get the tickets? Yeah, Jane, our train leaves on track. Hey, where's Chicken? Oh, I don't know. I asked her to hurry back, and she knows how concerned I am over these securities. If anything happens to prevent me from getting them to Richard in time, uh, I'll go out of my mind. Well, the baggage is on the train, and we still... Oh, there she is. Where? Oh, Irma, come on. <gasps> Well, they said that Commodore Vanderbilt was arriving on track five, and I wanted to see how he looked in his sailor suit. <laughs> Great. And if they told you the chief was arriving, you'd wait because you hadn't seen an Indian. Come on, let's go. Train now leaving on track seven for Bridgeport. To Come on, let's hurry. Right with you, Jane. Here, grab those bags, chicken. We can't be late. All aboard. All aboard. <laughs> Can't wait till we get to Lake Placid. Gonna try skating and skiing. Might even go in for a toboggan fling. How about you, chicken? Oh, not me. You can drink what you like, but I'm going to have something hot. <laughs> okay, chicken, you girls make yourselves comfortable. I'm going to stroll into the club car. Might find a gin rubbing game I can kibitz. See you later, kid. Are you enjoying the view, sweetie? Oh, yes, Jane. My, isn't it marvelous, this mechanical age we're living in? Well, what do you mean, honey? Well, on the farm in Minnesota, we always got ours from the cows. Huh? Now they get it from cars. Look there, it says milk train. 
honey, that's what brings it, not what gives it. Look, I'd like to take a nap. Why don't you walk back to the observation car? Oh, do they have one here? Well, of course they do. It's the last car. Oh, that's wonderful. I'll find Al and get him to hold me. People are always telling me I should be held for observation. <laughs> <laughs> I've always wanted to see what it's like. I'll see you later, Jane. <sighs> well, now maybe I can relax. Gee, I can hardly wait to be with Richard. I hope he swings the deal. Tickets, please. Oh, yes, just a minute. They're in my bag. Is the car warm enough for you, miss? Oh, yes, it, it's quite comfortable. Thank you. I suppose it'll get cooler as we go along. Yes. You see, as we approach Miami, we turn on the air conditioning. <laughs> Miami? But, but, oh, no. Pardon me, mister. Would you mind turning back a page? You're reading too fast for me. <laughs> Sorry. Here, if you want the paper, take it. No offense. Traveling for your health? Nah, I'm a bathing suit salesman. Just can't wait till I get to Miami. California's shot. Miami? Ha, <laughs> ha, I'm afraid you're in for a shock, mister. This train is on its way to Lake Placid. <laughs> get yourself a glass of water, buddy. How oh, for? This train's on the way to Miami. <laughs> Miami? But, oh, what am I gonna do now? There you are. For goodness sake, where's Al? Oh, I don't know, Jane. Why are you so excited? Did you lose something? Oh, I'm losing my mind, Irma. Do you know that this train is headed for Miami? Miami? Oh, that's silly. We're going to Lake Placid. Besides, we'll look funny trying to ice skate on the beach. <laughs> <laughs> oh, why didn't I take care of things myself? Irma, these securities. Richard is waiting with his client. What am I going to do? Oh, there you are, miss. Oh, hello, conductor. You've made a terrible mistake. This train to, to Lake Placid is going to Miami. I beg your pardon? Oh, uh, never mind her, conductor. What were you able to do about our tickets? Oh, everything is taken care of. The next stop is Philadelphia. You can catch a train back to Lake Placid. Here are your tickets. Oh, thank you, thank you. Now, Irma, hurry. Let's get the baggage near the door and find Al. Oh, there he is, Al. I can see by the whites of your eyes that you have learned the worst. <laughs> don't you worry, Jane. Have taken care of everything. Don't talk, Al. Just get the luggage together. We're coming into Philadelphia, and we just have time enough to get off this train and catch the right one back. But, Jane... No buts. Do what I say. But, but, but oh, I... Oh, you better do what Jane says, Al. I think she's angry. All right, but don't blame... Hurry! Her. All righty, Philadelphia. Already on track seven for New York City and points north... Hurry, Al. We'll change trains. Grab those bags and let's board the right train. Hey, before we go any further, there's something I think... I'm we... doing all the thinking from now on. Yeah, but Jay... Well, go ahead. I'm right behind you. All aboard. Train leaving for Lake Placid. All aboard. Well... Oh, we finally made it. Yeah, but Jane, I gotta I don't want to hear anything more from you. You almost ruined everything. Now, you and Irma just sit here and watch the luggage and the securities. I'll be back in a minute. On second thought, I'll take the securities with me. Stubborn skirt. <laughs> oh, Al, I'll listen to you. What were you trying to tell her? Chicken, when I found out we were going to Miami, I got panicky. Knew we'd have no use for ice skates and snowshoes and all that winter clothing. So I made a deal with a guy on the train. A deal? Swapped all our stuff for bathing suits. <laughs> bathing suits? Oh, Al, is that all there is in that bag? No, there's bathing caps to match. <laughs> Jane will kill us. Us? Well, naturally, ain't you my date? Oh, Al, what can we do? Well, maybe I can explain to Jane... Oh, no, it won't work. Even if I do convince her, as soon as she puts on one of the bathing suits and dives into the lake, she'll break her head. <laughs> That'll only make her madder. I don't know, chicken. Sometimes I get disgusted. Every time we try to jump the gun, we end up shooting ourselves. <laughs> no, don't say anything. Here comes Jane. We'll think of something. Well, hello, kids. Guess who's on the train? Who? Mr. Jorgensen, the skating instructor at Lake Placid. I told him we'd all take lessons from him, and he gave us a bargain rate. Jane, you shouldn't have spent money for ice skating lessons. Uh, we may not even use them. Quiet, chicken. <laughs> Why not? Uh, it, it, well, uh, they may not give us a license. Uh, besides, there are other activities, you know, dancing, 
tree chopping, log rolling. Swimming? Look, I spent $100 for that winter equipment, and I've hired Mr. Jorgensen for lessons, and if we're not going to take advantage of it, those ice skates might just as well be... Well, they might just as well be in Miami. Oh? <laughs> Al, I don't like the way you... Oh? Jane, stay away from that bag. Why? A lot you know about skates. If you expose them to this damp air, they, they rust before you get a chance to use Ridiculous. them. Ridiculous. I want to see what's uh, going on. No. Al, where are you and Irma going? We're going to the next car. For goodness sakes, you can't. We're in the last car now. Well, we'll get off and wait. <laughs> Irma. Al, this bag is full of bathing suits. How? Why? That's what I've been trying to tell you all along, Jane. When I found out we were on the train to Miami... I swapped the snow stuff for bathing suit. Oh, how could you? The two of you, how could you? Well, this time you're going to pay, and I'll see to it personally. When we get to Lake Placid, I hope it's 20 below, because you're going to wear those bathing suits. <laughs> but we can't, Jane. It's freezing up there. Oh, uh, don't feel too bad, Al. The blue lips should look nice with our tan. <laughs> Don't think that you are safe from film. Nearly everyone has it. Just run your tongue over your teeth. If you feel a slippery coating, that's film. And you'd better get Pepsodent toothpaste to remove it. For film collects stains that make teeth look dull. It harbors germs that cause unpleasing breath. Film glues acid to your teeth. The very acid that many dentists agree is the cause of tooth decay. And remember, film never lets up. So brush your teeth twice a day with film-removing Pepsodent. No other toothpaste can duplicate Pepsodent's film-removing formula. Get Pepsodent with Irium today. Well, we eventually reached Lake Placid. We borrowed skating equipment and had a wonderful time. As for Irma... She doesn't care too much about the outdoors. Why not, Irma? Well, I went hiking in the woods and I saw some very large traps. Yes, what about it? I wouldn't want to live in a place where they have such big mice. <laughs> <laughs> and you know, if anyone should take a poll among the mice, I wouldn't be a bit surprised if they didn't want to live with my friend Irma. <laughs> My Friend Irma is produced and directed by Cy Howard. Mark Levy writes the script with Stanley Adams and Roland McLean, and it is brought to you by Pepsodent Toothpaste with Irium, another fine product of Lever Brothers Company. Marie Wilson is starred as Irma, with Joan Banks as Jane. The part of Al was played by John Brown. Hans Conried was heard as Professor Kropotkin, and Gloria Gordon as Mrs. O'Reilly. Music was under the direction of Lud Gluskin. This is Wendell Nile speaking. The R-I-S-K, brisk flavor, that's what you get in Lipton tea. Yes, brisk flavor that picks you up, brings you back alive in a hurry. Brisk flavor that comes from Lipton's very special blending of the finest orange pico and pico teas. Try it. You'll find that this brisk flavor of Lipton's leaves you refreshed and ready to go again. And you can enjoy it often. Because even wonderful tea like Lipton's costs less than any drink except water. Always ask for Lipton Tea, the brisk tea with that heartwarming Lipton lift. Tune in one hour earlier next week and listen to the Lux Radio Theater, followed by the Pepsodent Show, My Friend Irma. It's a CBS, the Columbia Broadcasting System. <laughs>